Where was your first locked up meet? When or where? Walton. Well, for, for my last offence, for my last conviction, Walton, lad. I was in Walton from 2-4 till... 2-4. Two four till the end of two five on remand, then got security moved. Got security ship out because there was just parcels all over the wing. I'm almost that the same sentence. Yeah, mate. I was in Walton for two years. Then in strange ways for a year and a half, only man. And then I was off then, mate, through the system. Three years, three and a half years only man, something like that. And then the rest, the other eight and a half years, just went through the system, mate. Are you a lifer? Luckily not, Jazzy. Did you ever do Inley? Sure did, mate. Random guy, did you ever get on it? On what? <laughs> Stephen A5. Were you with anyone famous? There's no one famous in prison, mate. Tom Egan, you need to get fame and uh, shame and put them in two different contexts, mate. If you was once famous in public domain and you've committed criminal acts, you know, just a shame. It's different, bro. Leanne Elizabeth. What do you think of Jazz of the Boxer? Who's that Teddy Matthews little buddy? He just what he is what he is, lad, isn't he? Boss talent. Gone to because he's a cokehead. And that's what you'll get with the majority of the people around that Teddy Matthews. Boss talent. World class talent. Gone on the coke. Loads of them. And that's all Jazza was, mate. Boss talent. Hard. Pure endurance. Going, just a real scouser, isn't he? But his career got fucked up. Why? Because he liked to sniff. Simple as that, people. And you see it with loads. Of, and this isn't me hating on the kid. This is me stating facts. And there's loads of world-class boxers in the city of Liverpool that get up on coke. It's a big problem in the in the boxing industry, people. Whether you like it or not, they're all fit, athletic individuals, but they've all f up just like any normal person can. They can all develop addictions like any normal person can. And you know when these young boxers get a little bit of limelight, it goes to the heads. You know, they have a good fight, they get a little bit of popularity in the little area, it goes to the heads a little bit. They start getting offered to come to this boxing match or they want to get invited to this club or get invited to this party. And once once they start mixing with all that and they've got the leeches on them and they've got all the little dirty drug dealers that are, you know, just that's what it's like for them. You know, when you've got talent on your estate. I've seen loads of kids, mate. Pure talent. And you just see all the... Uh, Local gangsters who were already established, like licking their asses off them, pulling them into groups of people where this kid shouldn't be delving into this. He needs to stay on his path and become a world champion. These rats spotted a mile off. They can see the potential. And they're all in there before he's even established himself. And half of them don't establish themselves because these rats kick him. And it's the same in every industry, basically. Especially the music industry now. You know, there's a lot of gangsters trying to monopolise the music industry, street level, in every city. And if you don't, and if you don't, like, sort of go along with this organised crime group's way of being, you're sort of not getting studio time. You, other, other artists are staying away from you because these gangsters have monopolised the the drill industry, if you like, the rap industry behind the scenes. All these little kids, all these artists that you're seeing coming out of the city, all of them boss 
half of them are getting destroyed by these gangster rats the sucking what they'll do they'll cock a kid who goes viral they'll go in sign them up every stream every thing every bit of currency coming on the back of this music is going into his management's pockets and he's getting given a little thing and if he doesn't play ball he can just mute him What what they do in what they done in America years ago is basically what they're doing here, and what you'll have you'll have producers, you'll have people recognising as talented, and he'll go and sign a couple of the like, these producers will sign a kid from London in that postcode and a kid from London in that postcode, knowing that war, the same producer, will go through a couple of like like a network like a pyramid, so this producer. We'll have two other agents working for them. Them two agents will go and sign this artist, this artist. And if they want, if he wants, if he favours this sucker, he'll get this agent to sidetrack this career so this little lifter can fly. And everyone knows this fella is ten times better than the shirt lifter. But because he's doing favours to him, he's flying through. And a lot of the producers... What you're witnessing out there now in this country, I'm not talking about the Simon Cowles and they they old school perverted. I'm talking about the new ones. You know they're doing some messy out there, people. You need to understand where I'm coming from. Dave I O M, who's Alfie Lewis, he's a master in karate. I think that's what they call him. First and foremost, he's a fin. He's a. Is it a master? Is he a master? When you're off ten dan or from six dan in karate, and you, you're a master, aren't you? So that's what he is, mate. Al the Alfie Lewis, I think he's speaking about, is a world class karate expert, and he's got a gym in. in he's got a gym in Topsteth as well. A sensei. That's what he is, lad. He's, he's, he's a Bruce Lee type guy. He might not have the same abilities, but he's got the same title. Sensei. Did you box? I think every Scouse kid's had to go with boxing, haven't they? Every young Scouse lad has had to go with boxing. It's like football to Liverpool boxing. Liverpool, boxing and football is basically Liverpool sport. That's the majority of the sport, boxing. And like in other cities, you'll get basketball. Like in some London cities, in some London boroughs, basketball's the number one game, isn't it? That they all play. And in Manchester. Obviously, there's places where it's just football's like the religion, isn't it? Like Salford same part of Manchester but Liverpool the majority of the people grow up you know being taught how to fight and if you can't if you're not getting taught how to fight you can learn and fast mate and I think that's the best way to fight the best way to become a fighter is learning to become a fighter not being taught how to become a fighter it's different it's like the education system you know, you don't get you go you don't get treated life skills in the classroom, you get treated life skills on the yard. Why? Because that's where the happens. So if you're in a classroom and you're getting taught how to understand history, you're being taught. You're being taught a particular way. When you're in boxing, you're being taught a particular way how to defend yourself. And I'm not saying it's not the right or the wrong way to defend yourself. I'm just saying you're getting taught a particular way how to defend yourself. When you're learning to fight, you're learning how to defend yourself. You're not being taught a particular way. And, and the fights that you're getting into, you're coming up with all sorts of defence skills. Do you understand? Because you're learning on the job. You're not being taught before you go on the job. That's the difference. Learning on the job and being taught before you go on the job, the only difference is your preparation. And you all know what it's like when you're not prepared. You've got to act on the spot, haven't you? You've got to just go, bam, tap into this mode. 
That's why they say with that great SAS slogan, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Which basically means if you don't prepare what you're about to do, you're going to fail the objective. If you prepare what you're about to do, you'll be successful in the objective. Boxing also good for self-respect and morals. Depends where the boxing gym is. So I always come across a, this Arl fellow, I think he's Scottish or he's Irish or he's one of them. Little Arl fellow, grey hair. And he, he sees boxing from a position that not many people get to see. Yes, Paddy boy. And um, what he was saying is, which is a massive, powerful point that he was making, was um, the responsibility of boxing centres or boxing clubs within our communities these days is paramount. And they can, what do I mean? They can work in two ways. They can be great, positive hubs of energy or they can be very negative hubs of energy depending on who's training there and if you you can turn a blind eye to it all like but you know as well as I do the majority of your organised crime groups when they get to a particular age they all want to establish themselves as someone that can have a fight and someone that can have a go so they start going to MMA gyms and they start going to boxing gyms some of them have been at it for, from an early age going to these gyms but the coke's got a grip of them to career up so now they're just selling drugs can pass this organised crime but we're still mixing with the boxing life in the area still going to gym but what these lads are doing to the youth in these gyms and they must know what they're doing because you're old enough to buy a watch, you're old enough to grow up, drive a car, you're old, old enough to sell drugs, you're old enough to understand the dynamics of your actions, aren't you? So when you've got a boxing gym in your community and you've got 20 kids, 13, 14, 15, still at school, getting took off the streets of a night, get in here, which is all positive, this is all the positive. Use kids, get off the street, get in here. Do you understand what I'm saying? giving them something to do, burning them out psychologically, physically, they're going home, relaxed, having a good sleep, school in the morning, everything sweet. But then amongst them 20 kids, you've got 10 gangsters from your local community. And these gangsters are pulling up with Louis Vuitton sport bags, Rolex watches, 20 grand rides outside. And they're going in and they're on the phones and the the flamboyance and the, you know, the, the putting the kit on and the kit costs £200, it's a vest and shorts. You understand what I'm saying? But to these 20 kids, they're in awe. They're looking at this gangster, duck boxer. He's now a drug dealing gangster. These kids are looking at him, being influenced by him. How have you got your car? How have you got this? Where's he get them clothes? They might even be asking him, talking amongst themselves, and the kids aren't stupid. He's grafting. He sells this in. He's got this in. Is that how you get that? And that's what it does. And what the Kinahan cartel, you hear me always speaking about them, but they knew this. And these clubs are like recruitment officers for the army, basically. You know, you've got fit, strong, young lads. And what the Kinnahans were doing, where they were convincing young lads that they've got careers, that they're going to be world champions, that they're going to be this, but we need to take you from this gym, we need to send you over to Spain, you need to go and do six months in our gym over there, and we'll make sure you get to where you're going in your career. They get all these hundreds of kids from all over the country, going over to these gyms in these nice hot places where there's beds and parties, the lads are going over under the influence that their career is going to go through the roof on the back of these. Five months in, do all the training, do all the shit, and they're getting told, look, unfortunately, that fight fell through, which means, but there's work there. There's a little something there that can keep you over here, pay for your accommodation, and put two and a half grand in your pocket every week. Do you want to do it? 
the lads now being over there for three months absorbed in the lifestyle the sun the women the drink the partying go on let me in there and they were just recruiting strong game young lads that 50 percent of them did have powerful careers in boxing and it was ruined on them by this and the others never they were just given a lot of hope to encourage them groom them into this army like organization because that's what they were doing and that's how they became very very powerful because half of the boxers that went into that organization to box turned out to be organized crime group members yes leanne and that's the way it is you're going to have people that are blind and that's how it works that's how they developed a global group of naughty people and that's the dirty aspect to boxing and that's why I said it's paramount in the sense that they can do two things mate you can have this boxing club like, like let's say like um, there's loads of examples because it is what it is the community based and hubs so you're going to have drug dealers going into these gaffes it'll be up to the owners to say look fully understand and blah 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 but you've got to appreciate that we're trying to lead kids and you coming in dressed like a football player a millionaire is encouraging them to participate in crime 